Hey, I'm Angie. And I'm Ryan. And we are Happy, Happy Healthy, Healthy Begin. Well, I recently did a video about Neil deGrasse Tyson's love of GMO foods. <sighs> and now we're back with his love of ribeye. <laughs> no, actually, his views of plant-based diets. So there's some nice nuggets in here, some gems. Let's let's take a look what he says. Uh, what are my thoughts on having a plant-based diet to reduce carbon footprint and, and fix global warming? That, that's what you're saying. Is that the question? Yes. Yeah. So there's no doubt about it. If we all, if everyone were, became vegetarian overnight, you would reduce. Who says we all have to become vegan overnight or and it's a failure? That, saying that's a, a red flag to where he's going to go, in yeah. my mind, in yeah. my mind. So let's, let's hear him out. Exactly. It's, everyone has to do it at the same night. Okay, yeah. let's keep going. The carbon footprint. But generally, some of the biggest part of the carbon footprint is transporting food. Okay, this is why you want to eat locally to minimize that if you can. So from a post on Organaholic.com posted way back in 2011, okay, five years ago, titled Local versus Vegan, which has a bigger impact, they start out saying the Harvard Business Review recently published an article arguing that reducing our consumption of meat can have a many times greater impact on our carbon footprint than eating local. Yeah, uh, yeah. despite what Neil deGrasse is trying to say here, just by going meatless one day, like say meatless Monday, that would do more to reduce greenhouse gas emissions than buying 100% of your food locally. And the wow. reason for this is just like a small fraction, like say 11% of the carbon footprint comes from transportation. The vast majority of it, 80 plus percent, is from the production of food. So you can't get around the production of food. I don't care if it's grown in your backyard or 3,000 miles away. Production yeah, is true. production. And the reason for this is growing meat is super inefficient in terms of what you have to put into it and what you get out of it food-wise. Yeah, what is that called? The caloric inefficiency? Yeah, basically it's better to eat the plants <laughs> rather than grow plants, those same plants, and have the animals eat, eat them it. so we can eat so those can eat animals. Them. It's yeah. terribly inefficient. So Neil's not taking that into consideration. Now, I'm, as a scientist and as a big fan of engineering solutions to problems, Rather than give up my 16 ounce ribeye, what I might do instead, so what is this? You didn't hear the rest of my sentence, okay? Uh, by the way, cows don't actually exist in the wild. We invented them to turn grass into steak. <laughs> so, what? I'm so offended right now. God. So, what I'm thinking is what I'd rather do is invent a way perhaps to scrub CO2 out of the atmosphere so that then we can bury it from whence it came. Do you know how long it would take to make this project? First to design this scrubbing machine, to get it approved, to get it funded, to actually get it made, to test it, to get it working in space. I mean, this is this would be an entirely global project. Like everyone on the planet would pretty much have to be on board with doing something this kind of. It's going to take forever. And who's to say it'll even work as promised? Who knows what kind of variables were yeah. factored into this? But. Not That's eat. not an overnight solution so, any more so than everyone going vegan overnight is. I mean, it's going to take time. Like also. I says, I'm a scientist. I like to engineer a solution. No, you don't have to make any uh, machine or anything here. All you have to do is stop eating meat and dairy. And forget your whole local meat thing. Just stop eating meat and dairy. That's the biggest thing you can do to solve this climate change. You don't need to engineer some crazy expensive machine that could take 20, 30, 40, 50 years to actually get working. Well, I would possibly so that they are engineering fake meat that he could be eating. Yeah. Like there's, mm -hmm. we've reported on several brands that are engineering fake meat that actually has more protein and more nutrients than his, you know, yeah. cow steak. And it, it doesn't have to go through that caloric inefficiency. And not only that, they're even learning to make Petri dish meat. So, I mean, there is they engineering going solutions. on with solutions to the well, problem. We don't need this carbon scrubbing machine. We just have these engineered fake meat solutions that Neil could go and not have to give he up his so ribeye. He sounds so freaking 50s, by the way. So yeah. backward. And that would be a solution that where not much else actually has to change. And then you can completely... And, and you would control what the exact carbon signature is. In 
Not much else has to change. I mean, just leave the status quo, the, the machinery that brought us to this horrible situation. Just leave it all in place. We're going to have this little machine that scrapes the carbon and all is cool. Well, let's just keep exploiting animals and, you know, and the people who have to slaughter the animals. I mean, there's just so much wrong with slaughtering and eating animals. It's just really sad that he wants to keep the status quo in place like that. Yeah, all the pesticides, all the, the manure and waste that yeah. gets into the water. Just keep this cetera, all in cetera, place. As long as we have a bunch of carbon Let's in the just vacuum out <laughs> the, you know, the egg. Like, so are you also going to vacuum out the oceans and, yeah. uh, and the groundwater and everything else, too? This machine is not going <laughs> to solve all the problems. It's a fantasy. I want to see this machine. It sounds like one hell of a machine. So instead of just this turning to a full-on rip fest. It's a rip fest. On, on Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> Let me just say, Neil, yeah. <laughs> I understand what it's like, you know, I like you growing up most of my life having, you know, meat and dairy and I'm not like a special Superman that I'm vegan. I mean, I was able to do this on my own. I, I've figured out that on you have own? What yeah, about we, me? with you, of course, absolutely. You know, <laughs> I, with Angie's help, yeah, I haven't had any meat or dairy now for over six years. I'm healthier and fitter than I've ever been. I was overweight like you. I've lost about 70 pounds. You can do the same thing too, Neil. It's totally. not that hard to not eat meat. It's really, it's really not, not that, that hard. hard. Once you get started, and that's the thing. Like we said at the beginning, it's all about getting started. Start with Meatless Monday. Yeah. You know, continue on from there. I guess we should end it here. I'll leave your yeah. questions and comments down below here. What do you think about Neil deGrasse Tyson's proposed solution for He's saving a the world? He's human being. <laughs> about this crazy machine. The machine. The machine, or should he just maybe not eat meat? Hmm, you tell me. Uh, if you got some of this video, hit like and share it. Yeah, with a friend who's into Neil deGrasse Tyson. Thanks. Everything he says is golden. Those guys are jerks. Yeah. Why do you watch their show? <laughs> and subscribe if you're new and just found our channel for more vegan content from me and Angie here. At and Happy we'll Healthy show you vegan. how easy it is to go. It's really not that, it's not that hard. Yeah, follow us on Instagram too. You can see what we eat day in and day out. So as we're going to do, and we always no, do here, wait. Neil should do Keep, keep it, it Car, baby. baby. Keep, keep it, it Car. Too. And the way to solve that is by going vegan, bro. bro.